Good morning, everyone. My name is Pastor Dustin. Welcome to Grace. Thank you for joining us today in service and online. Here at Grace, we believe that a great commitment to the great commandment and great commission while having great community will grow a great church. Thank you for playing your part in that mission. If you would like to give today, please visit our website or drop your donation off in the offering box as you leave the sanctuary. Today, if you're watching at home, please comment on our video or send us a text, email, phone call, whatever during the week. We want you to stay connected with us, even if it's from your own home. And now, we get to reveal our exciting summer activity for our kids and students this summer. On June 28th through July 2nd, Grace students will travel to Crystal Beach, Texas for a one-of-a-kind beach youth camp experience. What is better than meeting with God on the beach? The cost for youth camp this year will be $350. Grace Kids will also have a unique kids camp experience. Our kids will be staying at the beautiful Twin Coves Park in Flower Mound July 11th through the 15th. With exciting recreational activities and great services, you will not want to miss it kids. More details to come. Grace Family, today we need your help. When you rent out facilities on the beach or at the lake, the overall cost can get out of hand quickly. And that is where you can help. Before our family meeting, please consider donating towards our summer camps. On May 2nd from 8.30 to 12.30, Carter Blood Drive will be having a blood drive right here at Grace. If you're interested, save that date. We'll have more details to come. Spring break is just a week away. On Monday, March 15th, one student will go hiking at Louisville Lake Environmental Learning Area. On Tuesday, we will meet at 9.15 and go to Topgolf. On Wednesday, we will have a game day right here at the church. I will send out more details to come this week, so parents, be sure to be checking your email. On Tuesday, March 16th, Grace Kids will be going to the Fort Worth Zoo. On Wednesday, March 17th, Grace Kids will be having a game day and movie day right here at Grace from 2 to 7 p.m. when church starts. For more information or to sign up, please visit the kids page on our website. Easter is hopping up on us fast. We will not have our traditional egg hunt this year, but we will have a unique experience just for our Grace families and their kids. On Saturday, April 3rd from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., we will be hosting an Easter drive through event in our front parking lot. There will be Easter baskets filled with lots of cool items, Plus, the Easter Bunny will be making an appearance for photos. Your family will not want to miss this. For all of our latest news, event registration, and details, visit our website at fmgrace.org or follow us on all of your social media outlets at fmgrace.com. If you're watching online, please like our video and share it with your friends. Have a blessed week. Hey Amen. You can tell we've got a lot of stuff on the agenda, a lot of stuff coming up into spring break. It's amazing what the governor's announcement will make. No, it really didn't have anything to do with that at all. So, Several of you have already started asking about what our plans are, what we're going to do, how we're going to enforce all these things, and so we're still working on that. Um, we're not, just because the governor says we can go do anything we want to doesn't mean we can do everything we want to. So we were, I was, I was, never, I was not as, at all Surprised that he opened up the restaurants and the businesses because everybody's doing anything anyway already. So, uh, but the mask I was shocked by. I thought that was, I was talking to our police officer. She's got two small children there in elementary school. And she said, you know, normally kids come home with snacks and with uh, uh, the flu or with coughs or with stuff. And she said, since our kids have had on masks, you should, they haven't brought home all kinds of stuff. So she said, I'm amazed at what all this does. So there are some benefits. I know you hate that. I know you hate that. But there are some benefits. So we're going we're gonna to make a decision. We won't do anything by Wednesday to drop all the guards, okay? We just want you to be safe, which has been our watchword ever, ever from the beginning. Be safe. Wear your mask when you're close to people. Don't be, don't be spraying them with your germs. And I'm looking back on the year of 2020, and it was tough. We've had some economic struggles, and, and I want you to know... Um, 
There have been several, we'll talk about that in just a minute. We've had several families in our church that have gone through the same experience that Bruce has. They've lost jobs. We've got some that are still out looking for jobs. And, and uh, we want you to keep praying for those families that have been through the mill. We've had some health struggles. We've had some relationship struggles, some personal struggles. We've even lost loved ones. Year of 2020, I lost my mom. Here just a couple weeks ago, we lost our nephew. We've lost some special people. We've had those that have been sick with the virus. We've had fear. We've had concerns. We've imagined conspiracies. I'm sure there have been enough conspiracy things out there that everybody assumes that COVID was start, started in the backwoods of China, specifically for us here in Flower Mound. Some have lost jobs. We've, we've been through a lot. But in the midst of all this, we want to continue to move forward because there is hope in the house. Hope is rising because the presence of God is in the house. So we want to move ahead. And I, I want to start moving ahead towards our heavenly home. I think it has caused us to focus more on what we have and how much we appreciate what we have. As we've been through a year without so much, it's, LaDonna and I have been so thankful for what God, with which he has blessed us. It's just been amazing. We'll, we'll be driving down the street and we'll just talk. You know, we're so glad that we have what we have and the kids that we have. And same time, it's, it's easy to hold tightly to what we have and appreciate what we have, but realize everything we have that we're holding on to sometimes is just temporal. I want to call your attention today for just a few. I've got a, kind of a weird sermon, but it's, it's what the Lord has laid on my heart for you this morning. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. I want to look at the scripture. Well, we, we can go back to that other one if you want to. Is that the first one I put up there? On behalf of the Grace family, the church board, the pastors and staff, the families, and the King of Kings, in the words of my grandmother Opal, until you're better paid, thank you. We're going to turn this service today into a thank you session. I want you to hear this pastor, this staff, this people, this board say thank you for your faithfulness, for your support, for what all you've done in the past year. Turn to Matthew chapter 6 now. Let's go to the scripture. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Father, anoint your word today as we present it. Father, I thank you today that we have this opportunity to gather with the, the family of grace. And I pray that you would bless our time as we say thank you and look at the rewards that are for those that look for your appearing. In Christ we pray. Scripture tells us to store up treasures in heaven. We've got to be about storing up things that are eternal, that are in the heavenlies, that are eternal. For where your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be. Mm. We must appreciate what we have, but we've got to focus on the eternal and think about long-term things. As I was praying this week and I was thinking about this Sunday and our, and our, our family meeting and looking back over the, the records and the, and the numbers and all that, I, I just wanted to stop and say thank you for helping Grace through the year. Look at somebody say, Pastor says thank you. Now, we're going to spend some time later in this afternoon talking at our family meeting about what all's happened, what we made, and how we made it. But, but I want us to realize that God is our source, and God was our source, and He provided for us through the year. But He had the right people in place to help us get through the year. Matter of fact, one of the people that God provided and put in the right place to help us get through the year is sitting on your row. They may be on the row behind you. God put the right people in the right place to get the right resources where he needed to have it so we could make it through the year. He put the right membership in place to follow the leaders. He put the right leaders. He had faithful people who were regular with their tithing and with their support so that we could make it. When we all could not meet together, we were still together. God sent talented people from pastors to be in the right place at the right time. Matter of fact, there was a, even a young lady by the name of Moore. Y'all remember Hannah Moore? 
Gary and Kimbra's lovely daughter. God sent her just at the right time when she was wanting to go to Colorado to work for a church. We were able to snag onto her here, and she was in the right place to help edit so many sermons. Matter of fact, that whole season we were missing, that all you saw was us on our, on the, on the, on the, we just edited services. We had the right people in place to get us through that tough time in our church year. It was amazing. God, we couldn't get together, but, but even, even the people that were here. We've got two young, young bucks, I guess we can call them, Dustin and Devin, that are talented in electronics and getting things taped and recorded and online. We've got the right people. God provided all those wonderful things so we could get through a tough year. Some of you loved, well, not some of you, but all of you that watched Pastor Jamie's little one-minute videos, you loved them. <clears throat> and I think it was Breen Rashid that caused them to come back out of, the, out of the can again. They were so much fun. I enjoyed even doing my little update two or three times a week. I used to do them every day of the week. And then it got to be... The door. But some of you were so blessed, you're so nice in commenting on what, whether you liked it or not. Your support, your encouragement, your calls. I want to brag on Mike Dibble. I don't want to brag on him, but I guess I've got to. You know, they've been gone for quite a while because they were in that special age group and they didn't want to get COVID. And everybody has their own level, so I'm not going to cause that. But he would call me every once in a while and just say, Pastor, I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you. Now, Mike, I appreciate that. And others of you have done the same thing. Text. You've been texting. Just to let us know you're encouraging them, your calls, your emails. You are the best. So I want to celebrate you today, Grace family, in this service. You are the Grace family that I so love and so appreciate, and I want to say thank you. Thank you, Josh, for sitting on the front row. Thank you, Jerry and Charlene, for sitting right front. LaDonna has to because she's, <laughs> no, she supports me more than you'll ever know. Thank you, LaDonna, for sitting on the front row, sitting even next to me. Thank you. She is the world's best Gigi. Her boys love her like you'll never know. I was reading a book this week that was given to me by Brad Jack. It's entitled Financial Discipleship. And I was reminded about how we made it through the year because of financial disciples that continue to be faithful in light of what we've all gone through. You know, there have been some churches that have had to lay off staff. There have been some churches and businesses that went to the government to borrow money so they could keep things going. Even your Assemblies of God district office borrowed some money from that PPP program to keep the campground because we had so many people down there and all of a sudden they couldn't let camp happen, they couldn't let reunions happen, no retreats happen. They were, and we still got bills that have got, you got to keep the electricity on even when nobody uses it. And that's fine, that's okay. There were churches that couldn't keep up their missions commitments and they cut them back. There were people that couldn't make their property payments. In the district office where we have a loan program, we would have churches come and say, can we have some forbearance on our loan? I read of one church that was off like 49% of their offerings. Then I thought about the grace folks. And I sat there looking at the financial report and reading this book, and I started crying, and I just wept all over my desk, thinking about the wonderful grace people and how good you are to support God's kingdom work through a year that has really taken its toll. So today I want to congratulate you and I want to share about the eternal things we're looking forward to and how we can look forward to them. This book that I was reading it was given by Brad Jack, but he's a guy by the name of Peter Briscoe and he's out of England. He's a very wealthy businessman. And the beginning of this book, it's not a very interesting book. It's not very, it's okay. If you want to borrow it, you're welcome to it. But at the beginning, he said, I was a financial planner. And he was in business and doing all kinds of stuff. And he said, then I put, I put several thousand dollars into a stock that somebody recommended me. He said, matter of fact, I put 20,000 euros into this stock. And he said, I caught myself looking at the value every two hours. And he said, I'd pull it up to look and see what it's done. Look it up. He said, then I realized the scripture, where your heart is, there your treasure will be. 
He said, at that's when I, I realized I had to become a financial disciple of Jesus Christ. But he says, I want you to think about some things. I want you to think about eternal things, not temporal things. So today I want you to lay up, storage, store things up in heaven. There are two things that I think you're going to get when you get to heaven. One of them I hope is going to be an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. You're going to walk up and see your Savior and you're going to want to meet him. You're going to want to hear what he said. And then you're going to want to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. And then the second thing I hope that you're going to get when you get to heaven, because you've been living for the eternal, is you're going to get the, the authority, the rewards, and the blessings and the benefit of all of heaven. But this author was writing, and he wrote something that just, just touched my heart, and I just want to share it with you today. I guess I've never preached on this before, never even thought about it before. But he talks about five heavenly things that we're going to get when we get to heaven. And what he presented was five crowns, five heavenly crowns. I was telling Pastor Jamie this week, I said, I just sat there and cried. And I thought about the grace people and how good you've been this year because you haven't thought about the temporal things. Because the temporal things fell by the wayside. Jobs, family, relationships, things that we need. They, but you kept on with the things that will lay up in store for heaven, eternal things. I was reading about these. There are five crowns. Let's look at these today. The term crown comes from the word Stephanos, the Greek word, which means to surround or a badge of royalty. It's where we get the name Stephen. It's a prize in the public games or a symbol of honor. It's referred to as a wreath or a garland of leaves placed on the victor's brow. But it's used figuratively in the New Testament for the heavenly rewards that God has promised those that are faithful. A crown crown when we reach there we get to heaven we're going to have a new temple a new jerusalem there's going to be a, a place to eat of the tree of light there's going to be paradise there's going to be a reward we're going to give white robes we're going to get a white stone we're going to get a new name we're going to get a new home we're going to see the heavenly jerusalem with provisions for all and justice and peace is going to reign but i've discovered this year we we're going to get there we're going to receive all these eternal rewards if we'll get our, high, our thoughts off the, of the temporal, the things that are right here. So I want to honor you today and talk to you about the crowns of heaven. We're going to go fast. The first is a crown that's imperishable. This is, we see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. This scripture is always talked about at funerals. Because you can't get to heaven, you can't get to the eternal until you let go of the temporal things that are down here. But this scripture talks about having something that is going to be imperishable. When you get there, you're going to get something that's not going to tarnish at all. It's not going to perish. Paul writes that flesh and blood and the things of this world are not even able to get to the kingdom of God. That means our bodies, our lives, our possessions. In heaven, we're going to have a crown that's not going to get old. It's not going to start to decay. It's not going to have aches and pains that we may have now. It's going to last and it's going to last. It's not even going to be able to be stolen. There's many other things that are going to be part of the kingdom of heaven that are, that are part of our crown that are not going to be stolen or rust or tarnish. Just a side note. Somebody got into my mother's checking account. Took $1,700 last week. Now, you realize mom died in May. Funeral was in June. Somebody took money out this week. So I went across to Chase Bank, and they said, well, could somebody? I said, she didn't. <laughs> said, well, anybody? I said, no, no, there's no, but it's not, no. So he called, and he had to go through as much rigmarole sitting in the bank with an officer as I had to do on the phone for the second time. Because within two days, he, he referred the money. He said, now write a check and get the money out of there quick. Because once they've got their number, they'll do it again. Within two more days, they took $3,560. I say all that to say that things that are temporal, they're going to go away. Somebody can steal them. My side note is, watch your accounts. We're getting such a society that people are getting very, very smart. We've talked about that Kara noticed, or some of you noticed when your receipts came out, somebody had stolen checks from our mailbox. 
So we're working on a way to put a locking mailbox and a camera out there to where anything that you mail in will be safe. But we really didn't feel it's bad because it was only one weekend somebody just, a friend of our church in, Sunny, in Sunnyvale, we were having dinner with them. They found out somebody had taken checks over six or eight weeks. They finally found out it was one man that was just frustrated with the church and he'd come by and take checks out of the mail. We've got to believe that, that we have seen from the ice storm this past week that some of the most important things are just things. Flooding and electricity and simple driving to work on the ice, heat and grocery stores. I pray that we've, some of us have lost so much in flooding and that we, we need to just pack up and move somewhere else. We had our, our son-in-law's family lost their whole house from the attic down through the second floor to the first floor and now we find water going all over everywhere. They've had to move out. Somebody said, oh, just think though, you can get all new carpet, new floors and new stuff. And she said, I'd just as soon have the old one, thank you. Did you see the paper the other day? The Hall of State at Texas had a massive flooding. We lost things that were valuable from the 17 and 1800s. But they're just things. We've got to realize that there are things that are temporal. Jesus says lay up in store things that are in heaven. I pray that you'll continue to lay up things in heaven because nobody can steal them. They won't rust. They won't go away. Number two, you'll receive a crown of rejoicing. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19. For what is our hope, our joy, our crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For you are our glory and our count and our, and our joy. Paul speaks of this crown as for us who are over those who are, we're called to watch and care for. The folks of grace will be one of my crowns when I get to heaven. I see people that I've had care for, and, and you are our joy. LaDonna and I will talk often about how we love you guys and can't wait to see you guys, and, and, and just, you are our joy. You're going to be part of my crown of rejoicing. We were talking about a family just the other day. I was thinking about them. I don't know why they came to my mind, but they were a family that lived close by and started coming to the church. The, the husband wouldn't come. He was raised a son of God, but he wouldn't come to church. And we kept reaching out and kept reaching out and kept reaching out and kept reaching out. And sure enough, he kind of eased in, started coming to church. I think he's going to be part of my joy when I get to heaven and see him because he started coming back to church, getting back into a relationship with God. He had been hurt by something that happened in Assemblies of God Church 50 years ago, but God brought him back. He'll be part of my joy. Some of you remember Michael Rear. Some of you old folks will remember Michael Rears. Most of you won't know him. They were a couple that came. Matter of fact, we did our very first water baptism on an Easter Sunday morning, back before we had a building. So it had to be in the 80s. And we did it or back in the 90s. We had, had the water baptism on an Easter Sunday morning that was so cold, we had to break the ice to get into the pool. But here's another young man that came from a church in Fort Worth that had been hurt and was away from God. And was turning, one of my most prized possessions is a letter from his dad that said, thank you, Pastor Plunk, for reaching out to Mike and loving him back into church and changing his whole relationship with God. They since moved to Arkansas and he's, he's gone on to heaven now. He's in heaven. But that's going to be my, one of my joy, one of my crowns of rejoicing is just thinking about all you people. We lost a friend this year, a good man. He was on the board that hired me to my very first church. He was, he was uh, Sharon's brother-in-law. No, sister-in-law is her sister-in-law's husband. I didn't think he was. He'd come to church every Sunday morning and put a $100 bill in the offering, just $100 cash. Now, back 40 years ago, that was boatloads of money. And he came and was faithful and loved on us. And his wife... She was a precious girl. She taught Sunday school. This is why I was crying all over my office because I start having memories. Isn't it terrible when you get old you start having memories of things that happen? That's why you're not going to get old. Is that what you said? But they, they, she was Todd's Sunday school teacher. And on our last Sunday, Todd asked if he could sing a song. Now, Todd's got a wonderful voice, but he really didn't sing. He got up and sang to Koilu, Thank you for giving to the Lord. 
I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. Todd will be a crown of rejoicing when she gets to heaven because she changed that life. I want you to have a crown of rejoicing. I was talking to Sharon Nightstep this week. I called her just to check on her. She was part of my group that I was supposed to, but I drove across her street and I thought about her. She's taught so many kids in Sunday school. There are going to be people, you're going to be part of your crown of rejoicing when you get to heaven. When we get to heaven, we see all the, the people that Beth has taught in the, in the choir. The people that you've touched. And, and, and you're just, just by walking up and saying, I'm blessed and highly favored. There are those over which you have had care and minister. You're gonna, they're going to be your crown of rejoicing. And you'll receive one when you, when you get to heaven. I hope you, hope you have loved on somebody. I hope you have cared for somebody. That's my challenge for you today. I want you to have something that's eternal, a crown of rejoicing, and it comes when you care and you shepherd over somebody. Number three, a crown of righteousness, 2 Timothy chapter 4. I have fought a good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not to me only, but to also all those who've longed for his appearing. A crown of righteousness. What is a crown of righteousness? Righteousness is right standing with God. I hope that when you get to heaven, you're going to receive a crown that means you're in right standing with God. If you have faith in Jesus Christ and you purchase, and Him purchasing your sins on Calvary, God's grace is going to cover you. I got the privilege to, to preach LaDonna's dad's funeral. And I remember that time I went to him and I said, Papa, I'm probably going to have to preach your funeral. Would you tell me now what I can tell those people as we stand at your funeral? Are you ready to meet God? And he said, yep, yep, I'm ready to meet God. He was able to give me that assurance. LaDonna went this week and was able to pray with a young lady, pray over a young lady. She wasn't quite ready to make a commitment to Jesus Christ, but she went out of her way to make sure that girl could get to the place where she'd be in right standing with God when she got to eternity to have a crown of righteousness. Mm. We can be righteous before our God. Paul sees this as a crown because he fought a good fight, he finished a race, and he kept his faith. We are saved by grace through faith. I pray that you have a crown waiting in heaven for you, a crown of righteousness, a crown of right standing with God. And that comes from being in Christ, running the race, keeping your faith, and finishing the course. What I'm going to challenge you today, I want you to have a crown of righteousness. That means hang in there, don't quit yet. Don't give up the fight. Don't quit now. I recently read that leaders feel that they're, we're going to lose a large portion of people who are going to have discovered that they don't have to go to church on Sunday morning. They can just do their church thing in a big easy chair. I pray you don't do that. Hang in there. I know there are reasons why we want to be away from people and germs and viruses, but don't stop being part of God's church now. Scripture says we ought to long for His appearing. Number four, you're going to get a crown of life. James chapter 1, 12, Blessed is the man who perseveres under trials because he has, showed the te- he has stood the test. He will receive the crown of life that God has promised those who love Him. I think there's going to be a special crown for those that have been through trials and struggles and tribulations. Pastor Bell talked to us last week about a young man that was beaten, in prison and beaten, and he was finally able to smuggle out of the country. And and he's living in in the the United States now. I've met that young man. I've seen the stripes on his back where he was beaten for the cause of Christ. And I believe he's going to have a special crown in heaven because he went through the trials. There are those who have been under persecution for their faith. There have been under those who have been under trials because of their faith and for their stance. They will receive a crown of life. But you also get a crown of life because you love Him. Do you love the Lord today? Many of you have been through trials this year. You've kept your faith. I want you to hear this pastor say, there's going to be a crown of life for you when you stand before the Lord. And number five is the crown of glory. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2 says, Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, serving as overseers, not because you must, but because you are willing, 
as God wants you to be. Not greedy for money or eager to serve, but lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears to you, you will receive a crown of glory that will never fade. This crown, I want you to hear this say this morning, goes to those who have served the household of faith. The church, they're eager to serve. They're examples. They're like shepherds. They go on and on about these folks. I, I tell you what, I want you to know, I'm proud of the people who serve at Grace. I think about the worship team that got up here early this morning, got ready so that you could have worship and, and lift up a song to the Lord. I thank God for the people who are right now giving care for your kids in the other room. I'm thankful God for those who, who are workers and volunteers in different areas of the ministry. For those that served at the pantry this week and went down with Lola to pass out food and serve the neighbors. Those that go to the homeless. I pray for those in intercessory prayer. I think you that serve in the church that are like shepherds around here. I think God has given you a special crown. And you're going to enjoy it. We're talking about when we begin normal again. We've been thinking about that and praying about that. I told you about that. We've talked about everything about men's Bible study to prime timers to Sunday school classes. To, and we're looking at all those. But you know, bottom line, we've got to get people back in the habit of being a volunteer again. We can't just start Sunday school. It's going to take teachers. We can't just start this again or that again because it's going to take people that will get involved. So I challenge you, if you want this crown... You want this crown of glory, then you continue to be workers in the kingdom of God. I call you to invest in eternity. I pray that you are challenged today with the crown that you can receive. Let me, let me just share one other thing with you. I was listening to, okay, I'm old. I was listening to the Happy Goodmans. Y'all know the Happy Goodmans? Well, look at you guys. I was looking at the Happy Goodmans, and one of the Goodmans' daughters was singing a song, and you know, it was one of those Gaither moments where everybody's standing around and everybody's down there singing, and it's, they're, they're fun. But I only catch it when they come up on my computer, and then I'll watch it, and then I'll go somebody. But the other day, uh, Tanya Good Goodman was one of Howard and Vestal's daughter, and she's there singing, and next to her was Howard and Vestal, and they're all, you know, Vestal's got that little hanky she always carries. And she started singing, she said, Look for me. For I will be there too. The old gospel song. When you get to heaven. And when we've been there a thousand years. A million maybe two. Look for me. For I will be there too. And I started thinking about the Grace family. I thought about the, the thank you that I was going to give everybody today. For all that you've done this year. And you have done well. But at the same time, I want you to receive a crown of glory. When we get to heaven and I look up and I see Jeff, and I'll say, God bless you. And I want to look for you because I want to be there, but I want you to be there with me. So today's sermon is about the five heavenly crowns that I want everybody to receive when you get to heaven. A crown of that's not going to perish, a crown of rejoicing, a crown of life, a crown of righteousness, but lastly, a crown of glory. And when you've been there a thousand years, a million maybe two, look for me, for I will be there too. I want every one of grace to be in that heavenly kingdom and get in a heavenly, wonderful place, and I want to be able to be there when the Lord places a crown on your head and says, Enter thy good and faithful servant. Father, I thank you for the Grace family. Thank you for the way that you provided for us, Lord, for the folks that have come to church. When we even couldn't come to church, Lord, they were faithful with their tithing, with their giving, with their prayer, with their support, with their encouragement. So, Father, today I just want to take on this day of our family meeting when we do nothing but be family. Lord, I pray that you would help us remember that we're working for eternal things. And the five crowns that Paul mentions that we're going to receive, they're going to be things that we receive them because of things we do here. Even though they're temporal things, Father, they're going to bring eternal rewards. So Lord, I pray today that you would help every one of us make good choices with our lives and the temporal things that we go through today. 
so that we can be receiving the eternal. And I thank you for that. I pray your blessings upon the house of grace and all these wonderful people. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now the reason we're able to have eternal recognition is because of the blood of Jesus Christ. We're going to close our service today with communion. I hope everybody's got a cup. I discovered last month that if you'll peel the top plate, there's a little piece of bread. But I learned last week, last month, somebody said, Pastor, do you realize when you let people in the crowd pray, those online can't hear them pray? So today, Pastor, Pastor uh, Howard and I are going to pray because we've got microphones. We are a family of believers. We are the bride of Christ. We are the blood-bought church. If you need, if you need, there, Brother Terry's coming around. If you need a cup, just raise your hand up. He'll come to you. But we are initiated as the family of God, as the household of believers, because of what Jesus Christ did for did for us. I tell every married couple when I do a wedding, you're married not by the ink or the seal on your wedding license, but you're a married couple by the covenant relationship you make with God. So this afternoon. In my letter to you about the family meeting, I'm going to tell you we're not a family of God because of the corporate documents of the state of Texas. We're a family of God because of the blood of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice. They gathered around a table and they they finished the meal, the Passover meal, and Jesus said, said, here's a piece of bread. And he tore it off and he gave it to him and he said, I want you to realize this is a symbol of my body. It's broken for you. So let's pray. Father, I thank you today for the body of Christ that was given to us. Father, thanks for giving us your son and loving us in so, so much, Lord. So, Father, today as we take this bread, I pray that it would be received as a, as a token of what you gave to us. And may we remember the sacrifice, the beating that Jesus went through for us to have our redemption and to have our glory in heaven. Bless this bread in Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's take the bread together. The body of Christ. And then Jesus took a cup that was filled with fruit of the vine. And he passed it around the table. And he said, gentlemen, as often as you do this, remember me. Someday we'll be able to get back to where we exchange cups with somebody that's close to us. I think that's such a valuable part of our celebration. But today we look and we take a piece, a cup that's filled with the fruit of the vine and we say thank you to the Lord for his gift to us of his son Jesus Christ. Pastor Howard, would you pray over our son? Heavenly Father, I look at this cup and it's simply juice, but it represents so much more. It's salvation, healing, it's provision, it's encouragement, all that I lacked, you provided on the cross. Yes, you did. So as we take this cup today, I pray that it won't simply be an emblem. It won't simply be something we do out of habit. But it'll be a fresh reminder that you gave your all for me. And while I was yet a sinner, you died. I thank you for your sacrifice, and we take this in remembrance of it today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's take the cup together. The blood of Christ. Would you stand with me? As you leave the church this morning, some of the teenagers are going to be along the back with their offering bags if you want to help with the the donation to our youth camp and summer expenses. Normally on our family meeting day, we'd go and have a spaghetti meal or we'd have some kind of special fundraiser and then we'd come back in for the meeting. Since we can't really have a lot of eating together, uh, we're going to let you if, you, if you want to. Is this when it was supposed to happen? Oh, you got a video. Okay, well, hold on to that. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. 
May the Lord keep you steady until that day when you stand before the Lord and He says, well done, thy good and service. And I pray the peace of God will be upon you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay, now we're supposed to do the video. All right. If you need to slip out and you can't stay for the family meeting, you're welcome to. But otherwise, please don't scatter because we'll never get you back together. Again. Hey, man. Looks like you're ready to go for the beach. Yes. All right, well, what's the hurry? You know, youth camp doesn't start till June. You got just a couple more months. True. But you can never be too prepared. That's why we're having a fundraiser today. That's right. We love and appreciate what you do as a Grace family when we host our fundraisers. You always raise the bar and help us reach our God-given dreams, and we thank you so much for that. Today, as you get ready for our family meeting, please consider donating towards our youth and kids camps. As you have heard moments ago, Grace students will be on the beach of Texas, worshiping God, and our kids will meet on the shores of Lake Grapevine. That's right. It's going to be a fun summer for both our kids and our students. In addition, though, we will tie towards Speed the Light and BGMC. You can place your offerings in the offering bags that our students will be holding or in the offering box at the back of the auditorium. Thank you for your generosity and belief in the next generation. You truly do change lives. Absolutely. We love and appreciate each and every single one of you. Thank you so much. Very good. Um, Rowdy, can I get you to bring me that podium right over there? What we want you to do, if you're here today, uh, and you're staying for the family meeting, we want you, then the back, there are six uh, sign-in places. You know we have to have enough people to make a quorum to have our meeting. So if just one from your family can go back and sign in that way.